Okay, guys, machine calibration on new machines. Store this information and give it to any new CAM hardware operators. Now, this will only work with these um, these smaller, what I would call uh, uh, commercial machines, not the not any of our OEM machines. All right, so you've got to download and install UV tools at any given time. You can find that on GitHub. Just simply Google UV tools. All right, when you get when you open it, the interface is probably going to look pretty similar to this. What you need to get going for uh, for the next part is any bed that you've already printed on any of the frozen printers. It doesn't matter as long as you've done one successful print or something close to a successful print. Um, you can use it to pre-fill some of the information you have. All right, so I'm going to I've got one from Matt over here. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Open, and in my Downloads area, he sent me one. Mm, goodness me. Let's find it. There it is there. BDB. So this is something that was tested before. So I'm going to open that up. What, what? And the only reason we're using that, right, is so we can double check the size in X, Y, and Z of these beds. That, that's literally the only thing we want from it. After that, it doesn't matter what was on this bed. We can go to the calibration. You can go to uh, Exposure Time Finder, and it's going to eliminate all that geometry. So what we're after, and if you didn't have that, you could have just done this next step. You could have gone to Calibration. You could have gone to Exposure Time Finder, and then you'd have to manually fill out this information yourself, look it up on the machine. What is the width in millimeters? What is the height in millimeters? Um, yeah, what is your current layer heights, etc. cetera? Okay? If you already know this information and or you're wanting to fill it in yourself, you can skip that first step. All right, uh, and you can just come manually type this out. In this instance, what we're testing for is we want to test at a 30 micron layer height uh, what exposure gives us the best details. So uh, layer height is 30. I'm good over there. Bottom layers are six. You'd get this from your normal printer information. Your bottom exposure you get from your printer information, and your normal exposure is what we're now talking about. In the case of Bluecast, we've been working with a 10 uh, 10 second exposure, something like that. We don't know if that's optimal. All right, so we want to start testing from about nine and a half. So from 9.5 seconds exposure per layer. All right, so we're going to start over here. Our normal exposure is nine and a half seconds. Once we've got the normal exposure filled in, this is the plate that it's actually going to build. This is the plate it's going to put on the, on the machine for you, and it's going to print these info, and the idea is you can look which one of these things look best to you. Uh, afterwards, all right. Uh, we're going to go through your object configuration. We don't care. I want, I don't care about that. I do. So you want to click pin, positive and negative pins, tick that one. And you'll see that added to that plate, you're going to get drill holes of one pixel. So, uh, so the size of the holes is two pixels big, three pixels big, four, five, six, etc. right? And that's going to allow you to see which of these even survive, all right? Underexposed, the first three to four wouldn't even show up overexposed, they might show up a little bit too heavy. And because you're going to have four or five of these next to each other, you, there's a visual way to look at which one looks the best to you. All right, we'll see what that looks like in a second. Uh, outside of that, you can put some of your own text inside here. I like to use the text that we're testing. So we're testing the frozen SM8K in this case, or the 14K, testing the 14K machine. And we're testing from 9.5 second uh, to 10.5 seconds, for example. All right. Uh, I like to put that on the test it, itself. It helps us to see what we're doing, right? Uh, to 10.5 second. Um, configuration, don't have to worry about too much here. Skip everything else. Go down to multiple exposures. Enable it, all right? So the bottom step is from our normal exposure, which we set at the top to nine and a half seconds. You just, you don't want to add any. You want to see one at that current exposure, all right? And then we want to do six tests, or we want to go up in increments of 0.25 of a second. So from 9.5, we're going to go to 9.75, then 10, 10.25, etc. Let's go up. Uh, let's go up in the first plus five. So it'll give us six tests. All right. You don't have to worry about anything else over here. What you do now is you generate the exposure table. Uh, once it's finished generating, you should see the layers. It's going to give you the layers down the side over here. You can see it's going to go everything from 9.5 all the way through to 10.75. Now it's going to do that. We can scroll up the top here. 
it's going to give you a bunch of these next to each other, seven or eight of them next to each other. All right. If you're happy with uh, the settings that you have, you can just click Exposure Time Finder and generate it. If you then look in the window, you'll see it threw away that first model and you have all these little models next to it. You can zoom back. So it's one, two, three, four, five of them next to each other. Your layer slices, you can move up the side here and you can see how it's going to print it. It's moving up and then it's doing the different units at different exposures. So you can see if you zoom in over here, this is the 10.25 layer. Go backwards one, there's the 10.5 layer. So this is starting the 9.5 all the way through to the 10.5 and then it's going to print them next to each other on the bed. You then go run this print. So the way to save that print, of course, sorry, my bad, is after you've saved this, you just go file, save as, and save it in your chosen format. In this case, it's still to -do box. Export it, print it. It takes about an hour to print, and it's only about three or four millimeters high. Then you come visually inspect this print. And what you're doing is under a scope, you're looking to see which one of these even completed. And then let's say it's the middle two that actually completed. Under here, they were missing. Over here, it's obviously overexposed. Which of those middle two is the closest to your liking? So example, let's say that was 10.25. Uh, I say 10 and 10.25, and you really like those two. But 10 was a little, you know, you felt like it was a little underexposed, and 10.25 was a little overexposed. You'd come back and rerun this test with a closer narrow, uh, a closer margin, right? So you go back into calibration, back into exposure. You now know that at 10, you're good, all right? Uh, but you come back down and say, okay, now we want to run the pins again. We want to do everything. But this time we want to go in 0 0.1 increments for five layers, right? So you uh, enable this. We start at 10. We know at 10.5 it was too much, but 10.25 was maybe a little bit too little. So we're going to go up in steps of 0.1, all right? 0 0.1 of a second for five increments. So everything between 10 and 10.5 we want to run at the moment, all right? And then expose it again. And then if you between 10.2 and 10.3 seem to be ideal, run a test at 10.25, okay? So you can run this test two or three times. It will dial in your exposure until it's perfect, until it's absolutely perfect. Think of it like when you go to the optometrist and they say, look in this, look in this one, better, worse, better, worse, better, worse. Find the one that visually looks the best to you and pretty much that's gonna be your exposure, right? After that, you then start dialing in your scaling factors in X, Y, and Z. Dialing in a scaling factor on X, Y, and Z while your exposure is not correct, uh, you're going to have a very bad time. All right, guys. Cheers. Bye.